Good Friday the 13th and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And once again, we had a very inversion happening around most of north central Washington, especially right here in the Wenatchee Valley and up in Okanagan County. And that's where this shot was taken this afternoon. It's from our Billy Goat a Sky Fi tower camera up in Okanagan County. Down below that, Brewster and Pateras. You can see us see the mountains uh, in the middle of your screen. That's the Canadian Washington border. Boy, that's about it. We did see some clouds above that inversion as well. And that really kept our, for our temperatures down. And as far as the weekend goes, not a whole lot of change. I do think we'll see much more sunshine here in central Washington, though. It will be drier, but we can expect some patchy fog each morning and maybe some low clouds and then partly cloudy and maybe even mostly sunny skies by the afternoons. It will be cooler, too, and we'll talk much more about that coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. And what we hope is not a preview of travel conditions for this weekend. It was a tangle of twisted metal and backed up traffic last night and this morning on icy Interstate 90 near Cleelum. The verdict is in on the man charged with four counts of second-degree assault and four counts of unlawful imprisonment for firing warning shots beside a moving BNSF railroad truck and one of two men suspected of stealing more than $5,000 worth of tools and saws from an East Wenatchee business is charged with theft and trespassing. But first we begin tonight, a tour bus driver was killed and several students suffered non-life-threatening injuries this morning when a Quincy school bus collided with a tour bus on White Trail Road. Several passengers on the tour bus also suffered minor injuries. Grant County Sheriff's Office spokesman Kyle Foreman said all the students on the bus were taken to Quincy Valley Medical Center to be reunited with their parents. The accident happened shortly after 9 o'clock this morning and also involved a third vehicle, according to Foreman. White Trail Road, a popular shortcut between Highway 28 and Highway 281, was shut down while the accident was cleared and investigated. Buses were running on a two-hour delay this morning because of icy road conditions in the Quincy School District. Well, as I mentioned earlier, what we hope is not a preview of travel conditions for this weekend. It was a tangle of twisted metal and backed up traffic Thursday night and this morning on icy Interstate 90 near Cleelum. The Washington State Patrol didn't report any serious injuries from the multiple uh, spinouts that forced the closure of westbound lanes for more than an hour last night and the eastbound lanes for almost two hours this morning. They were in the same area, both by Sparks Road. Traffic was diverted through Cleelum during those closures. Well, a Chelan County jury is weighing the fate of the Chumstick Valley man who confronted a group of railroad workers with an assault rifle. James Carl Brown's case went to the jury late this afternoon. NCW Life Jefferson Robbins has the verdict. The defendant is guilty of the four charges of assault in the second degree for those workers and for unlawfully imprisoning them by his actions as well. His firing of that weapon was in defense of himself and defense of his property. He didn't point the gun at them and say, get off the property. He didn't threaten to shoot them if they didn't get off the property. He was terrified at that instant moment and it all happened at once and he cannot be blamed for that. In the end, the jury sided with the defense. Six men and six women say James Carl Brown, a 45-year-old National Guardsman who discharged an assault rifle while confronting a BNSF railroad crew last year, is not guilty of four counts of assault and four of unlawful imprisonment. Brown admitted arming himself late that night in October 2018, confronting the workers when their crew truck crossed near his home, and firing at least three shots into the ground to stop them from driving forward. But after his arrest by Chelan County deputies that night, he said the truck driver tried to run him over, and he did not act illegally. Uh, I don't think it's right that I'm here in jail uh, protecting and, and, and um, enforcing my own rights as a, as a landowner um, and as an American citizen. When individuals are my private property, I've already asked them to leave once, and not once, but not twice. And, and rather than back up, they're going forward. So, to me, in my opinion, that it obviously, and even trying to run me over, shows hostile intent. 
Brown is not the listed owner of the land where he lives, and the four BNSF workers said his acts left them in fear for their lives and afraid to move their truck. On the stand, he admitted refusing to let the crew move forward so they could turn around and exit on the railroad right-of-way. And so what was the problem with the railroad workers driving right back out the way they came in? At that point, with the multiple trespasses that had already occurred that evening, I was not at all going to permit them to continue trespassing on the property. Even though they wanted to leave? Uh, <laughs> They could leave back and up, sir, as they were directed to do so. Now that he's acquitted of all charges, the jury must decide whether Brown is eligible to have the costs of his prosecution paid by Chelan County under Washington's Stand Your Ground law. Jefferson Robbins, NCW Life. One of two men suspected of stealing more than $5,000 worth of tools and saws from an East Wenatchee business is charged with theft and trespassing. Douglas County deputies say Terrence Stetner and an unidentified man cut locks on an outdoor storage area at Valley Tractor on the early morning of November 25th and stole four chainsaws, a shredder, two leaf blowers, two brush cutters, and assorted equipment. The theft was caught on video. Stetner, who's 44 and lives in Wenatchee, remains jailed in Okanagan County. Well, coming up next, the city of Wenatchee is backing away from a controversial business and occupation tax that would have solely affected Confluence Health. The Wenatchee Valley College Foundation recently received $11,000 in contributions raised during the 2019 season of the RLS Productions Concerts in the Gardens. And the Washington State Department of Transportation is always ready with special warning signs along highways for students heading home during breaks at Washington State University. This time, the signs are holiday themed. We'll show you. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Some jobs are a calling. They take passion and a devotion to the community. They're here for your kids, guiding the next generation of leaders. At Giza Credit Union, we help you support local teachers. Every purchase you make with the Giza Local Heroes Affinity Debit Card, we make a donation to select teacher organizations. After all, we can never repay them, but we can do our best to help a little. With the Giza Teachers Affinity Debit Card. If you want to work in IT, here's a tip. Employers value IT certifications. 91% say they play a key role in hiring. 72% require them for certain job openings. Improve your odds of getting the job. Enroll in the Computer Networking Systems Program at Charter College. In 14 months, you could earn an associate degree and six IT certifications. Get started at chartercollegeit.com, where we work to get you to work. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. Welcome back. In another news, the city of Wenatchee is backing away from a controversial business and occupation tax that would have solely affected Confluence Health. The city sought to collect up to $600,000 a year from the hospital and clinics using a new tax ordinance targeted at large nonprofit health care providers. Confluence Health paid the city $330,000 in lieu of taxes last year, and at last night's city council meeting, Confluence leaders said they'd been left out of the loop in crafting that tax proposal. We were aware that there were some rumors that a business and occupation tax had been discussed by the city and city council. However, we became aware of this potential B&O tax when I was contacted by Confluence Health board members and a physician member about the B&O tax being approved and in the final budget. I then called Mayor Kuntz, who informed me that the council needed additional funds to hire the police officers to deal with an increase in the homeless population downtown. Apparently, at a city finance committee, there had been an ask, and it was stated that confluence should be taxed. 
I asked for a copy of the ordinance and resolution and the mayor stated that it was still being drafted and he would send it to me when it was completed. Confluence Health is opposed to proposed ordinance 2019-44 for the following reasons. It would appear from our reading of the proposed ordinance that Confluence Health would be the only organization impacted. This is unorthodox, and the targeted approach of this tax highly suspect and possibly illegal based on our legal evaluation. It sets a precedent of taxing legally designated nonprofit organizations, and this is a very slippery slope. Well, the proposal didn't advance through the council last night. Mayor Frank Kuhn said the city would now pursue other options for its budget. The Wenatchee Valley College Foundation recently received $11,000 in contributions raised during the 2019 season of the RLS Productions Concerts in the Gardens. Founded by Robert and Catherine Rio Sandage, the RLS Productions Concerts in the Gardens is a five-week summer concert series held annually through July and early August at Omi Gardens in Wenatchee. Over the past six years, $58,000 has been raised to provide scholarships and establish an endowment for students at Wenatchee Valley College. RLS Productions began raising funds through the summer concert series to establish an endowment to provide scholarships in perpetuity. Funding has come from direct contributions and ticket sales. The Washington State Department of Transportation is always ready with special warning signs along highways for students heading home during breaks at Washington State University in Pullman. This time, the signs are holiday themed, of course. You probably need to be a fan of the movie A Christmas Story to get the last two signs. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Mary Mates of Wenatchee believes a clean home is a happy home. Mary Mates provides holiday cleaning services to cheer about. Don't let the seasonal cleaning ruin the festive fun. Mary Mates can simplify your life at a great value. It's never too soon to start planning a holiday perfect home. Mary Mates of Wenatchee happily offers a worry-free guarantee. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Mates do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Call Mary Mates today. Hi, I'm Ricardo and this is Amanda and we are from Impact Auto Sales. Where you can expect a hassle-free car buying experience. With our wide selection of used cars, trucks, and SUVs, let one of our friendly sales staff help you find the vehicle that fits your lifestyle. We have financing available for all credit types and great low rates for first-time buyers. Call us today at 888-8000 or stop by 3522 State Highway 97A in Wenatchee. Impact Auto Sales, where we strive to make an impact on your life and not your wallet. Are you like many who are lacking in their retirement plan but are skeptical to talk to an advisor? Are you concerned about where you should put your money or who to trust? At Solomon Financial, we are more about the people we serve than policies or products. We are a fee-based fiduciary with the mission of giving you the peace of mind so you can live the retirement of your dreams. If you have any of these questions or concerns, we'd welcome you to come see us. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Let's check in now with NCW Life's Megan McPherson for a look at what's happening around the valley for you to enjoy this weekend. Here's a look at what's on tap this weekend around the Wenatchee Valley. Join the Leavenworth Village Voices for their annual Christmas in the Mountains concert happening this Friday and Sunday at the Leavenworth Church of the Nazarene. Leavenworth's own community choir, now in its 37th year, will perform holiday favorites that warm your heart with Christmas memories past. As part of tradition, the audience will be invited to join in singing the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah to close the show. Tickets can be purchased through the Leavenworth Chamber of Commerce or at the door. Join the Wenatchee Valley Museum's Maker Space this Friday at 6 p.m. for a family workshop. Families will make a tabletop Christmas tree out of LED lights complete with origami presents to complete the decorative scene. All materials will be provided. Bring your festive spirits and listen to holiday music as you work together. Register online. The Cascade Elementary Holiday Bazaar is this Saturday from 9 to 2, located at 2330 North Baker Avenue in East Wenatchee. Support local vendors while you shop for holiday gifts. 
Join the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society at their annual holiday brunch this Saturday at the Bepo Grand Ballroom. Celebrate the holidays, enjoy a great meal, raffle beautiful handmade wreaths and holiday decor, and raise funds to support the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society Medical Fund. This event features a delightful brunch, fun entertainment, and a no-host mimosa and Bloody Mary bar. And of course, they will hold their famous wreath raffle featuring wreaths and other great holiday decor. This event will also provide you with the opportunity to give hope to animals in our community who don't have a place to call home. Doors open at 10.30 a.m. Get your tickets online at WenatcheeHumane.org. And finally, join the Wenatchee Valley Museum and Cultural Center for their holiday tea at the beautifully restored Historic Wells House and enjoy Christmas with the Clarks this Saturday at 1230. The house will be decorated festively for the holidays and period-specific attire is encouraged. Bring your friends and take your afternoon tea sponsored by Cha Fine Teas and a light luncheon sponsored by the Hilton Garden Inn while listening to Jeff Sandberg play soft saxophone holiday favorites. There will be prizes to be won and a live auction of decorated holiday wreaths. Go online to register. For more information on this weekend's events and others, visit the community calendar at ncwlife.com. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And before we get to those details, another inversion for us today. And that was pretty much our weather story throughout most of North Central Washington, especially for Wenatchee Valley and up here. Yeah, this is Okanagan County. Below this cloud deck uh, is Brewster and Pateras. As we look down from our Billy Goat Sky Pie Tower camera, these are the mountains along the Washington Canadian border. Some clouds above this inversion too, but things will clear out. And we'll talk about that in a second. But first today, unofficially with these clouds, we just didn't get that warm today. We thought we might see 40 degrees, didn't quite get there. 36 our high today, still above where we should be at 32 degrees for our normal high temperature. We started off at 28 this morning. 24 is our normal low. 53 record high. That was in 1979. Record low, 4 degrees in 1972. We did pick up another trace of precipitation. It's mainly been ice fog. I'm sure you've noticed it walking outside. You feel something hitting you, but it's not really rain or snow. It's just ice fog, and we have seen that the last couple of days. Precipitation now at 6.76 since January 1st. Sunrise this morning at 740, and the sun set this afternoon at 410. Taking a look at how your tomorrow shapes up. Let's just get right to our surface loop tonight. Mostly cloudy skies. We will see some isolated snow flurries. Just that little bit of snow activity could make its way across the Cascades and into the Wenatchee Valley. Like I said, only about a 20 percent chance for that. And then as we kick off our weekend, really not bad. Partly cloudy skies. We'll see calm, very calm wind conditions and mild high temperatures. Keep in mind our normal high remembers in the lower 30s and we'll be well above that for Saturday. Still nice for Sunday to end our weekend too. Calm conditions and mild. A little bit breezier with these uh, isobars a little bit more tightly packed offshore. They move onshore a little bit Monday, so maybe a little bit of breezy conditions on Monday but sunny skies. We will see cooler conditions as well. Huge area of high pressures parked itself down in the desert southwest, but it's grabbing cold air and bringing that right back up into Washington state. So we're going to stay a little bit on the cool side even as we get into Tuesday with partly cloudy skies. And then our next storm system begins to develop just off the coast. And the yellows and greens that we're seeing here indicates heavy precipitation. And that could be in the cards for us too as we get into the middle of next week. A 20% percent chance of mainly evening snow showers for us next week. And then on Thursday, as we get to the end of our seven day forecast, that'll be our best chance for the wet stuff. Cloudy skies, a 30% chance for rain mixed with snow. What we will see also warmer conditions. We turn more to a southwesterly flow and that'll bring us some warmer air and some wetter weather conditions. Let's take a look now at your Patriot plumbing, heating and cooling seven day forecast. Tonight we'll drop down a little bit more towards normal at 26 degrees. Partly cloudy and calm for Saturday. A pretty nice weekend ahead for us. 36 both Saturday and Sunday. 34 on Monday. We'll see cooler conditions on Tuesday right at the freezing mark. And then things get a little wet again by Wednesday and Thursday next week. Our best shot for snow will be on Thursday with a 30% chance then and high temperatures of 36 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more. As the NCW Life Evening News continues news right after this. A 
ABC Checker has new owners who put customer service first. When you have to get there on time, call fast, friendly, reliable AC Checker, 663-TAXI. AC Checker has the industry's only on-time or it's free guarantee. Conditions apply. Call AC Checker, 663-TAXI to schedule your cab or schedule online at acchecker.com. Call American Classic Taxi, 663-TAXI. That's 663-8294. Being able to support yourself and your family is an important part of who we are. We all need to know we're able to provide ourselves with a secure future. Some job seekers have a harder time finding work. That's why Goodwill's Employment Connection Center is here, a free walk-in job search assistance program designed to help people find work. When you shop at or donate to Goodwill, you're really being a job creator, and that's a good thing for everyone's future. Goodwill. There's more behind the store. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. 662-6846. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Friday to you. We have a very busy weekend of sports coming up. First, let's take a look at the Les Schwab Prep Basketball scoreboard from last night. In girls' action, Cashmere had no trouble downing Omax 61-28. A&A at Cruz to a 51-24 win over Cascade Christian. Cleelum Cascade games had to be postponed. On the boys' side, Cashmere and Omax had a great battle at Ron Doan Memorial Gymnasium. Bulldogs from the south came out on top 58-53. Girls bowling yesterday. Eastmont shut out Sunnyside 4-zip. Eisenhower bounced back from its loss to Wenatchee with a 4-0 win over Moses Lake. Now coming up today, Wenatchee and Eastmont in Tacoma for the uh, Narrows Plaza getting ready for what's happening tomorrow. But first, they're going to face Graham and Wilson in a warm-up today. Tomorrow's Tower Classic begins at 9 o'clock in the morning. On the wrestling mats last night in a battle of two of the top teams in the state, Sunnyside edged Moses Lake 38-30. Eastmont top West Valley 59-18. By the way, in that match last night, if you were there, there was a wrestler that was injured. Uh, they had to take him on a backboard to the hospital. Turns out he's okay, was able to ride home with the team last night, so that's good news there. What actually surprised Davis also expected to be one of the top programs in the state. 54-25 the final in that one. Coming up today, Moses Lake is in San Isidro near San Diego for the El Cajon Invitational. That continues through tomorrow. Also tonight, Mount Baker wrestling at Cascade at 6th in Cashmere at 7 o'clock. Coming up tomorrow, things get really busy when Anchi travels to Kitsap for the Olympic duels beginning at 9 o'clock in the morning. Eastmont, Ifrita, and Quincy are in Spokane for the West Valley Eagles Wrestle Rama. That starts at 9. 12 teams will be in Cashmere for the Cashmere Invite getting underway at 10. Cascades on the road for the Granger Invite at 10 o'clock. On the girls' side, wrestling tournaments include Wenatchee at the Judy Emery Invite in Foss. That starts at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Cashmere, East Monty, Fred and Moses Lake and Quincy all at the Warden Invite starting at 10. Also, a lot of basketball games on tap for the weekend. We'll start off on the girls' side coming up tonight. Wenatchee hosts Hanford uh, that's underway right now. Four games have 545 start times, including Efreda at Wapato, Quincy at Grandview, Okanagan hosting Shalana, Waterville Mansfield at Cascade, Manson and Bridgeport tip it up at 6. Boys side tonight, Wenatchee's hosting Hanford at 7. 715, it's Efreda at Wapato, Grandview hosting Quincy, Shalans and Okanagan, and Cascade welcomes Waterville Mansfield. Manson at Bridgeport, boys get underway at 730. All right, catch your breath. Coming up tomorrow, Sheila plays at Efreda at 330. Also, it's tip time for uh, Quincy. Quincy and Prosser, 545, Moses Lake hosts Davis, Eisenhower plays at Eastmont, and Enniat entertains Soap Lake. Shalane girls will see Granger at 6, while just up State Highway 150 a few miles, Manson hosts Waterville, Mansfield. Turning to the boys' action tomorrow, Wenatchee hosts Ferris at 245, Sela plays at Efreda, and Quincy hosts Prosser at 5. 730 tomorrow night, Davis at Moses Lake, Ike at Eastmont, Granger at Shalane, Waterville, Mansfield at Manson, and Soap Lake plays at Enniat. Well, the Wenatchee Wild will try to snap a three-game losing streak tonight when they host the Salmon Arm at the Town Toyota Center. Silverbacks, by the way, have lost eight straight coming into this game here tonight. Last time Salmon Arm won back on November 17th against Wenatchee. 
Puck drops at 7.05. Also, teddy bear toss night tonight for Operation Santa. Bring a new stuffed animal, teddy bear if you like, and throw it on the ice after the Wenatchee scores its first goal of the game. Wild, by the way, be back on the road tomorrow for a 6 o'clock game time at West Kelowna. Well, Seahawks travel to Carolina for a matchup with the Panthers Sunday morning. With the injury to Rashad Penny last week, C.J. Procise and Travis Horner will see more playtime this weekend. Offensive coordinator Brian Schottenheimer says it's nice to have some depth. That's the beauty of the depth that we have on our roster. The beauty of having a C.J. Procise that you're like, okay, you know, I'm a huge C.J. fan. I mean, the ability just to make people miss, the ability in the passing game. You obviously see we've used him in third down situations before, two-minute situations before. Uh, he's got a huge, huge upside. I think he's excited about the opportunity. And then uh, Travis is a guy that we've liked the whole time. So uh, both those guys, we feel really good about just the way they play. Travis, uh, very physical, uh, good understanding of the protections and stuff already, you know, being a young player. So uh, you hate to see it for Rashad uh, having a great, you know, last couple games. But uh, those guys will step up and they'll be ready. Seattle had trouble protecting quarterback Russell Wilson, gave up five sacks. The offense struggled throughout the game against the Rams. Schottenheimer says falling behind early takes them out of what they want to do. You know, the thing with protections that's so hard is, you know, it's, it's different than a guy drops a pass or a quarterback misses a throw. It's so inclusive of everybody. You know, I mean, everybody's involved, whether it's the quarterback with his drop. Uh, there's certainly times that Russ could have gotten the ball out of his hand. Uh, the receiver's not getting open sometimes. That, you know, that, that affects sacks sometimes. Um, so it's, it's hard to put, you know, okay, hey, we've been sacked X amount of times. Last game, you don't want to play the Rams the way we had to play them. I mean, they're really good up front, and uh, they were able to tee off on us. But uh, we use all those things. I mean, we, we, we chip people. We use cadence variations. We, uh, you know, use different, you know, formations and stuff. But uh, when you get in certain games against teams that, uh, like the Rams and where they're getting after you, it, it can be difficult. And that's where, again, we're always at our best when we're able to play that balanced football and you're sitting right there and we can use our runs and our play passes. Uh, when the score gets the way it does against the Rams, it's hard. Seattle, Carolina, 10 o'clock Sunday morning. You can watch it on Fox. Just a quick reminder, Les Schwab Community Toy Drive continues at uh, Hooked on Toys tonight till 7. Back tomorrow at Hooked on Toys from 10 to 4. Come on out and help join the party and make a difference in some kids' lives right here in the Wenatchee Valley. That's Sports News. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Have a great weekend. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And finally tonight, firemen are well known for getting cats out of trees, but in Quincy, it's police who are now known for getting a cat out of a store. Officer Abraham Guzman responded to a call at Quincy Market about a cat running loose in the grocery store. Guzman was able to corral the stray cat and take it to the Quincy Animal Shelter, where it's now hoped that its owner will find it or an adoptive owner will step forward. Now let's check in with Dan Coons for a look at what's coming up Monday morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan. Thank you very much, Grant. I hope everybody has a lucky Friday the 13th. I hope you have a fantabulous weekend. Don't forget to take us along this weekend. We're portable. You can watch us anytime you want. Come back on Monday morning. Get your workday started with me, Dan Coons, and my guests, Ken Osborne and Allie Shank from the Wenatchee Apple Sox. Anytime I can talk baseball, Apple Sox baseball specifically. I'm a happy guy. Plus, we'll have your weather forecast, your past reports, sports, and everything that you're used to. Start your day the local way, Monday morning live at 7 a.m. right here. It's Wake Up on Anchee Valley. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great weekend. The N CW Live Channel is your home for local news, local weather, and events including live local high school sports. Watch inspiring local shows featuring local people. Don't miss Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's learn. Guada TV. Street Talk and Other Stuff. The 12th District. Life with Lisa. And the Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Life Channel is your local TV station. Hey there, Wenatchee. I'm Sean Lee, and I'm inviting you to check out the NCW Movie Guide to keep up on what movies are playing in our town. I'm Jenny Kerstetter, and you are watching the NCW Life Channel.